Hi, good afternoon, everybody. OK. Um, so uh, the topic for discussion um, that I'm going to talk to you about is how do we build a sustainable uh, supply chain for EVs? And we are going to focus on powertrains, right? So um, uh, what is the concern uh, about uh, sustainability in EV? So uh, as we heard uh, throughout the day that EVs are greener and uh, they're better for the environment and all that. But is it really the case? Um, so uh, when we look at this problem, we need to look at it end to end. Of course, the energy uh, that is consumed by the EV, which is electricity, and when it is consumed in the vehicle, it's consumed in a, the cleanest way and the most efficient way. That's why we want to adopt electric vehicles. But all the uh, steps that go into making and uh, using the EV, uh, are they sustainable? Is it good for the environment? What are the concerns? So we will have a high level uh, look at some of the key areas where uh, sustainability is a concern and what we can do uh, to make things better. So the first thing, uh, as you are all well aware, that EVs need raw materials um, for the batteries. For example, we need lithium, cobalt. And similarly, for the motors, we need uh, copper, steel, and uh, rare earth minerals. So all of these raw materials that go into the EV uh, need to be mined and extracted. So uh, mining and extraction, first of all, consumes a lot of energy. And it has an impact on the local uh, ecosystem, such as con contamination of the water bodies and uh, destruction of habitat and uh, it can affect ecologically sensitive areas. And uh, last but not the least, uh, it can have an impact on global uh, ecological systems by uh, affecting global warming and things like that. So uh, the next aspect we have to look at is the manufacturing. So when we are manufacturing these vehicles, are we doing it in a sustainable way? So uh, the manufacturing process is a very uh, energy intensive process and consumes a lot of energy and releases a lot of greenhouse gases. And the global supply chain for transporting the components to go from uh, one part of the world to another needs energy. And there is a high water consumption for manufacturing of these vehicles. Right? So when it comes to using the EV, uh, when we are using the EV, we use electricity. But what is the source of this electricity? Um, today, the majority of the source of the energy that goes into powering EVs comes from uh, thermal power plants uh, by burning coal. And the second source uh, is uh, renewable sources. So we need to fix this by improving, uh, increasing the amount of renewable energy sources that go into powering our EVs. Um, and of last but not the least, at the end of line, what do we do? Are we completely recycling all the components that go into the EV? If the design is very complex, uh, then disassembling and recycling all the core components is uh, equally complex. Um, and then if you are not disposing the batteries or the uh, other metallic components properly, that could lead to contamination. And if you don't recycle, that could also uh, lead to a lot of concerns. OK. So one of the challenges in EV is that the need for using rare earth metals. So if you look at battery technology, that needs rare earth minerals. And similarly, in the motor technology also, we need rare earth minerals like uh, neodymium uh, uh, and uh, samarium. So uh, rare earth minerals, which are uh, necessary for the high performance motors, permanent magnet motors that we're using today, they are dependent on these rare earth metals. And it causes a lot of environmental impact. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the coming slides. So if you look at what are the uh, different ecological impacts of using rare earth minerals, it can affect the uh, land, it can affect the air, it can affect the, uh, the clouds, and it also affects the uh, ocean and other water bodies. So there is significant impact to using rare earths in our motors, uh, which we are doing today. So what is this? Uh, so uh, how do we quantify this impact, right? So if you look at uh, the amount of uh, raw materials needed uh, to produce one ton of rare earth uh, magnets. Um, so to mine and extract one ton of rare earth magnets, we end up using about 12,000 cubic meters of uh, waste, uh, generating 12,000 cubic meters of waste gas and about 13 kgs of dust and about 75 uh, cubic meters of waste water and about one ton of radioactive residue. So this is a major concern. Um, the uh, places where rare earth is being mined, uh, extracted today, uh, result in a lot of radioactive waste, uh, which can affect uh, the human and the animal life in those areas. So uh, anybody can guess how much rare earth um, 
uh, minerals were mined and extracted in the past one year. So in China alone, in the past one year, we mined and extracted around 210,000 tons of rare earth uh, minerals. So as the EV ecosystem scales, this number is going to go up, and it's not scalable, it's not sustainable. We have to find a solution. So what could be uh, some of the solutions, right? So if we integrate different technologies and strategies, we can definitely mitigate the negative impact. So uh, we'll look at some of the things, right? So one, we can use substitute materials, right? Instead of using aluminum, we can use carbon reinforced polymer. Similarly, instead of using rare earth minerals or uh, metal, we can use motor technology that does not uh, need rare earth minerals. Um, and the other thing we can do is we can go with responsible sourcing. So we can ensure that the extraction of these minerals are done in an environmentally uh, sustainable way, right? So if you look at the motor uh, or the power train, which is a key component of EV, this is a life cycle where we can optimize. We need to optimize the motor design. We have to uh, come up with efficient usage pra practices. And we have to uh, do some life cycle assessments and responsible sourcing, uh, re uh, use alternative technology, and recycle the rare earth. So this is how we can go to a more sustainable uh, power train uh, ecosystem. So uh, coming to Chara Technologies, what does Chara Technology do? We build, uh, design and build motors and controllers. Our motors uh, do not use any rare earth magnets in them. So we are uh, developed uh, our technology based on uh, synchronous reluctance motor technology. So uh, we have demonstrated this motor, which has a very high efficiency, about 95% efficiency, which matches the uh, PMSM or BLDC, which is in the market. And it's lower in cost because we don't use rare earth magnets. And uh, it reduces supply chain risk because uh, today, to source rare earth, you have to depend on certain countries globally. And uh, we reduce the overall carbon footprint. So uh, coming to the products that we have in our lineup, we have uh, rare earth free two-wheeler motors. So it's rated around 6.5 kilowatt peak uh, power uh, with 26 uh, kilowatt peak torque. And we have a three-wheeler motor, which is about 10.5 uh, kilowatt uh, peak power and a 65 newton meter peak torque. We also have a four-wheeler motor. This is a liquid cool system, uh, runs on 320 volts uh, bus and uh, has about 75 kilowatt peak power with 180 newton meter peak torque. So uh, that's my talk.